Well, welcome back to my Commodore 64 Games Memories video series. This is where I look at old games and some of the technical details behind them. Today we have Basic Sprite Multiplexer, written by SES Simon Stelling of Genesis Project. There's the basic code. Let's just run this first of all, and we'll just have a quick little look in the C64 debug GUI about what this is doing. So we can quite clearly see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So 16 multiplexed sprites. We can see that they're sprites because the C64 debug GUI shows these red bounding boxes around where the sprites are. So let's have a look at this in the raster line debugger part of C64 debug GUI. So we can move the targeting cursor down the screen and then we can see what the aha uh -huh. so we can see that there's something updating the vic sprite registers which repositions these sprites as the raster line moves down the screen so here we can see that the first sprite which is that green s sprite we can see that as we, as we move the raster line down then something is storing into the sprite registers to move it across and then down into a new position so that when the raster line gets at this position the green s is displayed in the new position and then the next sprite the red one the red s gets updated interesting to note that the sprite positions are getting updated uh, just before they're needed as opposed to just after the sprite finishes displaying so this is a kind of like a just in time model of multiplexing where the sprite registers seem to be updated just before they're actually needed. I think it's interesting that this code here, even though it's all basic code, is just in time updating the sprite registers enough so that we can get a 16 sprite multiplex formation. It's interesting also to note that when the raster line gets towards the bottom of the screen, then the sprites are obviously moved back up to the top of the screen so that when the raster line then loops around and starts again from the top of the screen then the sprites are all grouped up at the top of the screen all ready and waiting so something is storing into the vic2 sprite registers during the screen display now the basic code i can see on line two and line three that there's a wait or a couple of wait, uh, several wait uh, commands actually. So this is going to be a hint on how this basic program is actually synchronizing with the raster is that it's using the wait command to do that. But let's see if we can find the exact cycle and instruction where the VIC2 registers are being updated. So we'll look at what's updating this green S position. And I have a feeling it's here. So look, there we go. Moving it left and right, I can see that there's this instruction there. So the instruction at EA1E, which is the store indirected with D1, Y, that is doing a store into the VIC sprite register for the green S, because we can see that the green S starts moving when I step left and right in the raster line schedule. So let's see if we can find in the basic ROM disassembly, because, well, actually it's going to be in the kernel. Um, so we can see here that EA1E basic ROM and kernel disassembly, we can see that it is the put HR on the screen routine. So we have two stores, one for D1, comma Y, and then the other one at F3, comma Y. If I put these windows side by side, you can see that it's the same code. So we're definitely in the kernel routine, of course, because we're pretty much running basic code, right? So the basic kernel has to well, the basic ROM has to be enabled and the kernel has to be enabled because we're using the basic print routine or rather the basic code is calling print. So yes if you like these kind of technical deep dive videos then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel or sending me a super thanks they are all always very much appreciated. Let's have a closer look at this basic, basic code so let's load it back again we have to do a reset of the machine because basic will crash or rather the screen becomes unresponsive 
So here we go, we've got these weights on line two, but the first line actually goes to line four. Line four does a whole bunch of setup. It's doing pokes with reads, and that's probably setting up the basic sprite pointer for definitions for the green S, or the, the colored S the sprite definition. But it's the poke on line five, poke 648,208, which is the important part of this basic program. 648,208, so two, uh, 648 in decimal is 288 in hex. Let's look for 288 in hex. Well, there we go. It is the high byte of the screen memory address. Okay, so let's click on this, see what routines reference 288 in hex, which is 648 in decimal. So it's one of these routines, I think, is going to be doing some setup involved with that. And then, ah, there we go. Let's go back there. Let's zoom in a little bit as well, I think. But yeah, this is the set of the start line routine. This is the mover screen line routine as well. So this one stores into AD, but E9, F9 stores into uh, D1 and D2. And it's that store with D2 and ORD with 288, which is the important thing. So the basic, when it was poking 648,208, it's changing the memory address or the memory range rather where the uh, kernel print routine is actually storing its data. So don't forget when basic does a print, all it's doing is that it's translating the print statement into bytes, which then gets stored into screen memory somewhere. The screen on the Commodore 64 is just an area of memory which contains data. If we run uh, this print line without the poke, then we just get a, a bunch of characters which are just data bytes at the top of the screen because it's doing a home which is the inverse character uh, s there and it's got a whole bunch of ats and then i think moving the cursor to the right and stuff like that let's uh, test that in vice so because it's, it's easier to type stuff in vice rather than trying to type stuff in c64 debug GUI. i really don't know what the screen handling is doing in c64 debug GUI, but it's not that friendly so if we just do a print home hello world, then we get obviously hello world up in the top left hand corner of the screen. If we change this to be poke 648,5, for example, oh gosh, let's get rid of the semicolon. There we go. Uh, I'm also going to reset 648 back to four again, which is its default value, right? 648,4. Let's get rid of the hello world up in the top left. And then if I, we run the O, oh, yeah, that, that wasn't so sensible, was it? It's displayed or poked hello world in the middle of the, the line, so it was kind of like not obvious. Let's let's type in the same thing again, but a little bit further down the screen. So when I poke 648,5 instead of 648,4, this tells the kernel print routine to use the next 256 bytes onwards from the default start of the screen memory. So if I clear this line now and let's make it really obvious there we go the hello world starts displaying from the 256th byte from the start of where the screen memory is currently being displayed from so the vic will only really display screen data from addresses which are aligned to one kilobyte which is uh, 400 bytes or 1024 bytes in decimal aligned so the the vic2 screen display you see this is this is 0400 and then if i poke 0500 in hex then that's 256 bytes onwards that's where that at there is where the hello world will start displaying from if i change the basic high byte address so poking 648 with a value changes where the print routine stores or pokes data into memory. So 208 is D0 and multiplying that by 256 or 100 in hex, we get the start of the VIC uh, bank of, of registers. So the VIC chip controls everything to do with the display on the Commodore 64. Whoops, let's type in the right command with switching between C64 debug GUI and, and VICE. Uh, they have different keyboard mapping, right? quite annoying okay that's I didn't want to load the directory I wanted to load the program right let's get back to it anyway so 
this code, when we poke 648,208, this is telling the basic statement to start storing data into D000, which is the VIC register bank, if you like, or the memory space in, in memory where the VIC registers are stored. When the IO space is enabled by the processor port down at location one. But we're not really worried about that because we're running basic code. We know that the basic ROM is enabled. We know that the kernel ROM is enabled. So we're not really too worried about whether or not RAM or IO is mapped into this area. We're pretty sure that IO is mapped into that area. Let's just have a quick little look at the C64 programmer's reference guide, uh, page 99, programming graphics on the Commodore 64. And let's scroll down. Just to really clarify, uh, the location at 53248 onwards, which is D000 onwards, is related to the VIC chip. But we're just going to scroll down until we find the precise page, which says, there it is, uh, 53248. Oh, that's where the uppercase characters are stored if the character, ra character ROM is switched in, which it's not. Uh, we're getting down to, eventually, we'll get down to sprites because we know that it's the sprite registers, right? So let's keep on scrolling down. Da, 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 da. Eventually we'll get there. And still, ah, there we go. Sprites, sprites, yes, good. Yes, yes, yes. Da, 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 da. And eventually we get to a nice little table which details those are the sprite registers for the color. Okay. And the sprite positions, there we go. Right, so decimal 53248 and hex D000, uh, starting with the sprite 0, X and Y position. So 208 times 256 is 53248, of course. These are kind of like numbers that stick in your memory. You don't even really need to use a calculator to work them out. They're just there in your brain, or my brain anyway. So this code will do some setup with that print at line six. And then the print at line three is poking a very specific sequence of bytes. And there's a reverse S in the middle of that print, which basically does a home again. So the one print statement is displaying or poking bytes into D000 onwards for the sprite position registers. Then it's doing a home, which resets back to D000 again and then it's storing another set of values into the sprite position registers. So that's how this basic code actually works, is that it's got a very carefully timed uh, basic print statement, which is poking or storing values into the uh, VIC sprite position registers. So I have a feeling that when this was coded, the, the, the print statement will store values uh, when it's synchronized with the uh, raster position, which is the raster line as it moves down the screen. When the basic code does that print statement, it's the timing of that is pretty consistent because we're using a wait or a couple of wait commands to synchronize precisely with the raster beam. So there's the timing of the print is pretty consistent. So the only thing that you need to change are the values really that the basic print statement is putting into the sprite registers. So the, the sprite formation here, the Y positions of the sprites are a function of the timing of the basic print routine, storing those bytes into memory. We can change the basic code. So instead of poking or storing values into the sprite, into the VIC sprite registers, we can change it so it will store those values into memory starting at 4000 in hex or 16384 in decimal by poking it with 64. So 64 times 256 is 16384, right? So now we run the basic code and we can see now pretty conclusively in the memory view here that we have a bright yellow line in the memory view there, which corresponds to uh, the memory address 4000 in hex. Uh, there's another bright yellow line here, but if we zoom into the memory view, we can see that those are mapped to uh, D809, D800, D803. That's writes into the color RAM, don't forget. So the color RAM is fixed pretty much in this VIC display mode anyway. It's fixed at D800. If we zoom into that bright yellow line there, which 
the writes from the basic code as it runs, we can see that sometimes there's a flicker of different values and that's just because of the way the timing that works. But we can see that those writes were at 4000 in hex, which is 16384 in decimal, which is where the basic code was told to redirect its screen output. We can verify that by using the vice monitor debugger window to display the screen or the display the characters in the memory at 4000 in hex. Uh, we'll just do the whole, we'll just do the proper memory range, which is uh, 4000 to 43E7. There we go. <clears throat> so we have the ready statement being stored now into the memory at 4028, which is the second character row down. If we use the debug graphics map in text screen mode here, we'll use the ROM character set, we'll turn off multicolor mode, there we go. That's the initial screen at 400 in hex, but if we move down to the range now at 4000 in hex, there we go. We can see now that the basic screen display has been shifted to 4000 in hex by that poke statement, 648,64. If we do a list, we can see. So the original screen data displayed by the VIC is at 400 in hex, but nothing's updating that memory space, right? It was the, it was the new screen at 4000 in hex that we could look at with the debug text window in ICU C64. So that's how this basic code is able to run or display this nice sprite multiplex formation just using basic and a little magic poke there's no other sys statement or anything like that used there's no uh, machine code being executed it's just nicely timed basic print statements to make the right values get stored into the vic sprite registers and update that appropriately so thank you very much for watching if you like these kind of videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to my channel. And I hope to catch you around next time. Take care, have a great day, evening or night, wherever you are.